All right, praise the Lord. We're going to be closing out Ephesians chapter 6. Praise the Lord. Um, if you just happen to come on this video randomly and you haven't seen this whole study, please spend the time. You have to go back to the first chapter. The first link below this video will get you right to the New Testament studies. The ones that I'm done with are hyperlinked. Go to Ephesians, click it. You go to the page that has all six chapters of Ephesians written down below with the comments and all the Bible references. And you'll also see that um, uh, there are the six videos right there on one page. Might be easier for you. Amen. But don't just start here. Uh, Ephesians, of course, you know, there was no chapters when these were written. There were no verses. Amen. They were written through. And um, you want to start and because we go through so, so much. Spend the hours to do it. It's, you know two or three, maybe three hours or something to do all six chapters, maybe three and a half, but go through it. It's worth it. And it really debunks a lot of heresies out there, which is why I have done uh, or I am doing this study. Amen. Now, this is going to be a fairly easy chapter. Not too much commentary here like we had in the first two chapters, and even some throughout the other ones too. So let's get right into Ephesians chapter six. Number one, to Jesus be all the glory. Number two, don't forget to click that link below so you can get to chapter one, if you just come by here by happenstance or search, and um, anything that's bolded is not part of the actual chapter at hand, Ephesians chapter six, then my comments are the title of the chapter. Um, so those are in bold. Anything that's not bold, of course, is the actual text. And I see I forgot to do bond servants and masters down there at the bottom. So you know that that's not part of the text. Amen. So I forgot that one. But I'll fix it when it goes on the web page. And then I also capitalize some words that are in the text just to accentuate them because uh, I'm trying to combat the heresies, the greasy grace, the emergent church movement, the 99% of the false churches out there are just blasphemous. So that's why we're doing this, right? Second Peter chapter 2, the book of Jude tells us that um, there is a lot of heresy out there. Amen. So let's get into Ephesians chapter 6 and to Jesus be all the glory. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may be well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. Now, the Bible says in the Old Testament, which is just as pertinent today as it ever was, uh, don't forget, when the apostles were walking the earth, all they had was the Old Testament. Now, Jesus did away with the uh, Mosaic law, the law of Moses, which pointed to Christ, amen. The whole Old Testament points to Christ. But it says in the Old Testament, if you spare the rod, you hate your child. Just as pertinent today as ever. Amen? But do not provoke your children to wrath. Don't do it unrighteously. You don't spank your child unrighteously. Amen? But bring them up in the nurture and admonition and the fear of the Lord. Amen? Servants, that means slaves that are Christians, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh. With fear means in the, you know, in the, as you're walking on earth, amen, with fear and trembling. It tells them to obey their slave masters, amen, with fear and trembling and singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Not with eye service as men pleasers. Don't just do it for your own satisfaction, your own good, to try to get in with the, you know, the boss, but do it unto the Lord. But as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart, with goodwill doing service as unto the Lord and not unto men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man does, see, any, whatever good thing any man does, that's works of righteousness. This isn't the works of the Old Testament law. This is, you must work righteousness. Amen? You must be obedient. Then the same shall receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Let's look at Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord, you shall receive the, the reward of the inheritance. If you work righteousness, you'll receive heaven. For ye serve the Lord Jesus Christ. But he that does wrong, he that sins, shall receive for the wrong which he has done. If you willfully sin, you're practicing sin, so to speak, you're gone. You can't be a saved sinner. Amen? You shall receive the wrong which you have done. There is no respect of persons with God. And you masters, this is Christian slave owners. Do the same thing unto them, forbearing, threatening. Don't be a bad slave owner, as what the Bible's saying. Knowing that your master also who is in heaven, neither is a respect to persons with him. 
and listen to the conditions. Listen, I don't have too many comments on this chapter. Watch the conditions that you have to do as a Christian. Jim, your work salvation. I'm not even going to comment on these other than put the condition in quote. To make sure you know that that's a condition that you have to do in order to inherit heaven. The Bible says, he that endures till the end of the same shall be saved. Amen. Ephesians 6.10 says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Condition. And in the power of his might. Verse 11 says, put on. That's an action. The whole armor of God that you may, conditional, be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Oh, yes, you can fall away from Christ. We went and talked about the word sealed in the first two chapters. For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Watch your conditions coming up. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Condition. That you may, conditional, be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand, you have to do everything. you. The Bible says strive to enter the straight gate. You know what the word strive means? It means strive. It means to agonize. This is not cakewalk, people. You go to church on a Sunday and that's it. Come on. Stand there. And, that's, and the reason why you're in that because you love to hear itchy ears. You get the blasphemous music, the contemporary Christian, heretical music. Blah, 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 blah. It's like a rock concert. You guys out of your mind? I used to love it. Trust me, I'm not. Hey, look, I have the beams out of my own eye. So um, I can take try to take this, uh, the specks out of yours. I mean, stand there for, that's a condition, having your loins girt with truth and having on condition the breast praise of righteousness. So you have to understand. Over. I'm sorry, I've gone through all six chapters tonight, uh, this morning. I, I kind of do my third shift work because I have missionaries overseas that I talk to overnight sometimes. So. I'm on an overnight shift, but it's been a long six chapters, but I could go on forever. Um, I'm, I'm barely getting much sleep lately because I'm just such a deep study and stuff. So um, sometimes uh, my words get ahead of my brain. Amen. So having your loins gird about with truth and having on, you have to have it on the conditional. Amen. The breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of pre peace. More conditions. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked. If you have the shield of faith on, if you're withstanding, if you're holding strong, if you're obeying his commandments, if you're listening to his word, if you're obeying him, then you'll be able to quench the fiery dots of the devil. You let a little leaven in, you're still going out with your sinning friends, doing, uh, you know, you can't hang out with sinners, amen? You can preach to them um, and stuff like that, but you can't go sit at a bar or a restaurant that serves booze and sit at the bar. Oh, yeah, yeah, Johnny, how you doing? You want to know about Jesus? Uh, you know, it's everybody's drinking around you. <laughs> can't do that. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.22, abstain from what? All appearance of evil. I can't sit at a bar. Oh, but I'm witnessing Jim at the bar. You're out of your mind. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always, another condition, with all prayer and supplication of the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. All conditions. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? I missed it. Many of you have too. I hope you go through this whole study. I hope you start in book one. Chapter one, excuse me. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. That's a righteous action. Amen. For which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And then the final greetings of this very beautiful letter. But that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. Titus, a beloved brother and faithful minister of the Lord, shall make known to you all things. Whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that you might know our affairs, and that might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren, in love with faith, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace, and we define grace basically in the first two chapters of Ephesians. So that's where you got to start there if you haven't. If you, if you didn't go back, you need to go back. <laughs> first link below, click on Ephesians, everything's on one page. Grace, the true grace of God, be unto all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. I should have added here how you love Jesus. John 14, 15, it's very simple. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Oh, you're works. It's the Bible, people. If you love me, keep my commandments. Grace be with you, all them that love our Lord Jesus in sincerity. Amen. And this was written to the Ephesians from Rome. Okay, praise the Lord. That was an easy chapter, so to speak. 
Um, I pray this edified you, and we'll be going on tomorrow. I think I'm going to start. I have to do the study first, so it's going to take me some days, but I'm going to do Romans next, and then we'll continue. All right. Uh, if you're not walking holy, I just pray that you go through some other studies too. Up top to my website, there's a link uh, menu item called Salvation I put up there. Click on that and learn what true salvation really is. Amen. you got to cleanse your hands. Amen. you got to purify your hearts. Jesus did his work on the cross. You'll learn if you went back in first and second chapters what predestination, election is, and chosen, and all that. So I pray you learned if you didn't know before. And I was also very... Very, very happy that I learned that too. And I really repented after six years of being in heresy. I was saved for six months. And then I went back into willful sin for six years, believing, hitting all the false churches I could, that loud, blasphemous, contemporary Christian heresy music. And the false pastors behind most all the pulpits will just tell you, oh, you're getting to be more like Jesus when he clearly says, go and sin no more. Thanks for watching. To Jesus be all the glory. Amen.